All right, it's Jerry Mason, the Kicking Lawyer, and we're here for another Law Talk. I appreciate you guys joining us today. As always, if you haven't, please like, follow our channels and podcasts and uh, social media, etc. Uh, we're available wherever you listen to podcasts. We're on all social media platforms. Get a big TikTok following. Uh, you can see Josh do all the dances on TikTok. Right. It's, it's his favorite is, the dances. favorite is the dances. And of course, uh, if you haven't already, please download Inside My Head. It's an album available for free by the local guys in a the band who will be performing at the grand opening of the bookstore this weekend. So you can come check them out there. Uh, Michelle Allen, I was just talking to our guest here. Uh, she, she's known and liked in the community. But if you're buying, selling, renting, leasing real estate, give Michelle a holler. She'd be glad to help you out with Cry Like Realtors. Um, and then, of course, I have Mason's High Team Martial Arts. It's been open 30 years. We have a location in Covington and a location in Millington. So just visit masonsmartialarts.com, and we'd be glad to get you started kicking and punching and whatnot. And then uh, this weekend, we're excited because we have the grand opening for Jam Books and Records. It's already open, but we wanted to do a formal opening. So we've got a lot of exciting things going on this weekend. Uh, it starts at 1 p.m., so if you can, come check us out that day. And then last but not least, if you need any help with uh, website design, commercials, video, whatever, Josh will help you with Masonite Digital Marketing. Just visit MasoniteMarketing.com. And joining me today is Miss Jennifer Dodrell. Did I get it right? You did. Okay. Good <laughs> the, job. His hint on the Dodge <laughs> thing helped. <laughs> but she's a, a local author, but also uh, she's going to be in person live for a signing at the bookstore, Jam Books and Records, a grand yes. opening this weekend. So yes. I, I, like I said a minute ago, I appreciate you taking the time to do that. I'm really excited about that. I, I love to meet people in the community and just kind of not just talk about my book because like I love that, but mm -hmm. also just talk about what they like to read. To get an idea what they're interested in. Well, do you like reading about the same? Do you like the type genre that you write about? So I personally? write cozy mystery. I do read some. Um, should I confess this? I don't know. It. My absolute favorite right now is like suspense, psychological. Like Freedom McFadden. Yeah. Yeah. Type. So I read that yeah. stuff too. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, Slight backstory for me: the bookstore we've been planning to do. Uh, we opened it in January. We've been plant. My wife and I were planning it for like a year and a half. Huge readers. We love to read. Uh, we're big. We like to listen to records too. So it's book a record store. Anyway, um, so because I knew I was opening a bookstore, I wanted to be able to intelligently talk with customers about all kinds of books. I typically, prior to the bookstore, read mostly history business, real boring stuff, self-help right. type stuff. Right. And uh, uh, like as an example, my favorite book was uh, David Goggins' You Can't Hurt Me. It's a it's okay. pretty somewhat graphic book, but it's about, you know, self-empowerment. Anyway, so I start the first book I read that was sort of outside what I normally read was The Perfect Marriage by Geneva, Gen, Gen, Geneva Rose. Geneva Rose. Right. Have you read that? I've heard of it. Okay. It's yes. very good. I was yes. shocked at how good it was. I, was, mm -hmm. I told my wife at the end. I was like, are all these books like this? Like, is this why? And then I read Frieda McFadden's uh, co- uh, not co- I read it. I eventually read Coworker. I read right. A Housemaid. Yes. Uh, then I read Ver A Verity by Colleen Hoover. Yep. I just finished a Coworker by Frieda Mc. Oh, no, I just finished The Teacher. I read Coworker oh, last the month. The Teacher was. I don't. Well, I struggled with The Teacher the end, because of though, the subject the matter. The end was what got me. Yeah, I did not see the one twist. Yeah. The. And see, I that's what I, I like is the twisty it up, stuff. Yeah. So I find myself actually putting that in my cozies, which I kind of like. Uh -huh. It's a little hybrid, uh -huh. you know, because cozy mysteries are typically, they're clean. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no cursing. There's no sex on the page. There's no gore on the page. Mm -hmm. Although I have a little blood in mine on one part. There's a knife involved or scissors, scissors. And um, it's funny, I'm working on the second book. So I'm trying to remember like everything about the first book. Yeah. So I don't talk too much about the second but cozies, they're t you know, they have their typical genre factors. And then I pull in some twists sometimes, and I like that. I think, I think hybrid, kind of merging mm -hmm. those things together is, is not a bad thing. No, I haven't. I want to read your book. I haven't read it yet, mm -hmm. uh, to be transparent on it. But I intend to. And we intend to carry it at the store also. Good. But why don't you tell us a little bit about the book? Okay. So I was thinking about this on the way. Like I said, I'm working on the second one. I'm like, what? So, do you mind if I read the blurb? No, go ahead. Okay. That'd be easier because I was rehearsing and it wasn't working. Um, Peg, widow mom blogger and empty nester, is desperate for a new hobby. After a late night blog post leaves her dedicated Mama Birds followers fearful that she's closing her blog, 
She adopts a reader's suggestion and forms the Empty Nesters Birding Group. And that's what the series is, the Empty Nesters Birding Group. On their first outing overlooking beautiful Pensacola Bay, a birder dies from an allergic reaction of peanuts in the bird seed, seed that should be peanut free. A hurricane barrels toward the Gulf Coast and Peg's overbearing, animal collecting, but well-meaning mother-in-law crashes Peg's empty nest. After the hurricane passes, Peg checks on her new birder friends and finds one wounded and dying. The assailant is still there and knocks Peg down a steep staircase. Stuck in a boot with a broken foot and still reeling from the two murders, Peg recruits a fellow birder and her mother-in-law to help solve the crime. She even teams up with the detective investigating the case, whose dimples draw her in a way she hasn't experienced in years. So there's a tiny bit of romance. That's not the focus. The focus is Peg, but it was a lot of fun. Are you from Are you from here? I am not. Are you from I, Pensacola? I'm from Gulf Breeze outside oh, okay. of Pensacola. I went to college in Pensacola. Yeah, I was going to say that because I think people often write about things right. from their own life right. or inspirations from their own life. Right. Um, so I read a lot, and I'm, I'm sort of saying this because I'm curious if your book follows some of this uh, genre. Believe it or not, I read a bunch of Perry Mason novels. I've mm-hmm. read 13 of them so far. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've read those. They're very dated. Um, right. There's a lot of uh, racist and sexist language in them because they're written in the 30s. Right. But they're interesting because it's almost like stepping into time there. But they also have twists at right. the end. You know, it ties up at the end somehow with Perry Mason. Yeah. So when I think mysteries, that's what I think about. Right. Is, is that sort of <laughs> similar along the lines of what? It is. It's similar. If you think about, have you seen Murder, She Wrote? Mm-hmm. On, okay. Mm-hmm. Murder, She Wrote is a cozy. Mm-hmm. That's a cozy. Okay. Mystery. That makes sense. Yeah. Then. Um, it's set in kind of a small town. So Pensacola is not a small town, but I use a certain area of Pensacola. Mm-hmm. Um, my dad, uh, I actually started writing it after my dad passed away. And I'd spent like the summer with him. And, of course, I was from that area. So it's fun. I am able to use places that I've been to. Mm-hmm. And um, in this particular book, we go to um, Brancus out at the NAS Pensacola. And as retired military, you know, my dad was retired military. It's that's part of who we are. But, yeah. Um, yeah. So co- um, murder she wrote is something most people know. A lot of people don't know what a cozy is. Mm-hmm. But Agatha Christie was kind of the same thing. Mm-hmm. Her books. So I would think Perry Mason's probably along the same line. Yeah. If you take out the the dated language, it's because they're. I mean, I would assume at that time. Even the language in those is PG-ish, because um, right. even when they have murder in the book, you don't see or you don't right. you don't get the descriptions of anything grotesque. Yeah. Um, but uh, I also find the backstory of the Perry Mason novels interesting because I'm a lawyer, and Stanley Earl Stanley Gardner that wrote them was an attorney, and uh, it, it, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff in real life that's I think somewhat more intriguing than the books. Like he. He based Della Street's character mm-hmm. on his real life legal secretary, who he left his wife for oh. in real life. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I think there's uh, some parallels in his books, right. probably to what right. went on. And he he practiced in like 1902 or three or something. So but anyway. Sure. So but, the writing's like very different, but the whole mm-hmm. idea. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I I enjoy the writing honestly because uh, it, it is a way to step into that era, like the right. way they like just as an example. Women catch the hysterics in the book. Right. Yeah. So they, if it's all any time there's a, other than Della, um, the the women, a lot of the female characters will get hysterical, and he says they catch the hysterics. And then the men in the book, well, it's so, so, so sexist nowadays, but would literally like pass her off to handle the hysterics. Right. You know, that kind of right. stuff is dated. But it yeah. shows you, again, the, the, the mentality then, because right. that was what was accepted. So anyway, I find that mm-hmm. interesting. Mm-hmm. So on, you got a lot of stuff about birds in there. Do you do bird watching? That's so or? funny, because when people come to see me, like when I did my book signing and then I did book stock out in Memphis at their public library, they're like, so are you a big birder? And I'm like, ah, no. Oh, really? Um, but my dad was. Oh, See, okay. my dad and his wife were big birders. They traveled all over, even to other countries, Central America, South America, mm-hmm. for certain birds. And it was something I never really understood until I found this piece of paper in a drawer in their house. And it had names of birds, and it had like a little box. And I'm like, it's like a scavenger hunt. 
Hmm. Yeah, it, it's interesting what people get into. You know, people, even people that my, my wife likes to go look at uh, gardens and stuff like right. that. Just not my thing. Yeah. And she enjoys birds also, not to the extent that, you mm-hmm. know, she goes and necessarily collects or identifies them. But I can see I can see the interest in that. It's interesting, though, you would write about it. Did you do any additional research, I guess, to sort of be accurate on the bird end that you didn't know? Um, some, but I, you know, I used my dad. He, mm-hmm. he knew so much. And he, we were with him. He was on hospice and we got, we were able to stay in his house and be with him. And he, his house backed up. I actually use his house as the main character's house in this book. Mm -hmm. Visually, it helps me figure out where people are. But his house backed up to some wetlands, protected, you know, marshy area. So they had a lot of birds, raccoons, bunnies, squirrels, the whole, it was great. Mm -hmm. So we would see birds. My sister and I would be like, we don't know what that is. So we go describe it to dad and he could tell us. Hmm. He could tell you by the bird call. I mean, he was just yeah, amazing he, he was like avid that. Very, watcher. very avid, yes. He yeah. and his wife both. And so I was able to use that, what what he taught me. Um, and then I had to do a little bit of research. The, the mystery in here, um, there's a little tagline on the back of the book, and it says, it all comes back to the bird, and it does. That's hmm. what the mystery is about. Interesting. So. So you, did you, because it's, it's published through a publisher, yes, right? Yeah, because I think you had mm-hmm. emailed at some point about Ingram for us. Mm-hmm, yeah, right. And I'm mm-hmm. sorry I didn't get to get right back with you. A lot of that stuff I let Josh correspond with because during the day I'm in court or something in, in right. any event. Yes, we actually do have an Ingram account. We have some problems sometimes with them. N- not even your publishers d- doesn't have any power of that. Right. They kind of have a monopoly on a lot of the yes. s- new books. I've, I've heard that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the not to go through the complaints of owning a bookstore with them, I'm learning. <laughs> we don't. It doesn't matter. Nobody's going to listen. But like if I had ordered them, even when you emailed, I probably wouldn't have gotten the books in before you're True. coming in. So True. if you have some, you I know, do. obviously we'll uh, I want to buy some for the store. Okay. And then I figured people can, you know, hopefully get them signed by yeah. you when you're sure. there. Yeah. Uh, for those that missed the beginning part. Uh, Miss Jennifer is obviously the author of this book, Birds Alive, right? Mm -hmm. And she will be in our uh, Jam Books and Records this Saturday, April 20th, from 1 to 3 o'clock for the grand opening. Um, We're going to have tables set up. We've got her, a couple other authors, uh, live music. And then if you're into bourbons, we have a bottle of Pappy Van Winkle. I assume, are you into bourbons at all? Oh, yeah. Do you know about Pappy then? No. Have you ever had Pappy? No, but I'm excited. Yeah, so <laughs> Pappy is, uh, I've had all of them. So there's like the 10, the 12, 15, the 20, and then there's a, a, a 22 or something like that that's supposed to be real high end. I have tried them all and didn't like any of them, honestly. But they're great. They're marketed well. It's a big deal to get to say you've tried them. So in any event, if you come to the store this weekend and you're of age, we have a bartender going to be there. You can try some Pappy while supplies last because I have one <laughs> bottle. Uh, Save me a glass. So my question then, I, I meant to, sorry, I said all that to follow up and say this. So mm-hmm. by getting an actual publisher, how did you do that? I, I ask because I have written, I, re- I wrote a kid's book that was basically about my daughter um, that I self-published. Mm-hmm. And then I have some business books I self-published. Sure. The kids' book I did send off to some publishers to mm-hmm. try to get picked up, and mm-hmm. of course I got no traction. So I was always curious about people that have been successful that way. Uh, if you had an agent or, or what you did to get picked wow. up. Wow. So this was kind of crazy, and I don't think everybody's experience. I accidentally went to a writers' retreat that was for Scrivening's Press, which is my author, my oh, publisher. Cool. Um, and accidentally, I mean, I saw it and I thought, oh, I'll go to that. But it was it was mainly for their authors, hmm. but it was open to other authors. It's a small traditional press. You get royalties, don't get in advance. But um, it's very family oriented and the publisher was there and we all met together. So most writing conferences, if you go, you go to different cl- different classes and it's it's crazy you know fast paced and all that kind of stuff well this one was like maybe 30 people Mm -hmm. and we were all in the same room and so we got to know each other i was able to talk to the publisher i've actually written another book that's women's fiction so i talked to her about that one she said well we don't usually do women's fiction how about you know mystery and i said well i have a cozy mystery i'm working on so I actually put it in their contest. They have a yearly contest, two, two different ones. One is like just starting out, you know, 
new author, not quite sure, getting your feet wet. And the other one is you have a finished manuscript. Well, I won in the mystery category Mm -hmm. of the getting started one. So when I finished it, I sent it to her. And she emailed me within three hours and said, don't talk to anybody else. We want you. Oh, that's great. I was like, okay. Congratulations (laughs) on that. (laughs) And then about a month later, I got an email that said, hey, I want to talk to you next week. I mean, it was literally, I just waited and waited and Mm -hmm. waited. That was hard. And then when um, it was somebody else in the company, and so that was frightening because I thought, well, they're going to tell me it's not a good fit or you have to make these major changes or whatever. And they were great. Hmm. They were like, make just a couple little changes, send me that, and then we'll get going. Where is their publishing house out of? Arkansas. Arkansas. Right. Okay. And they do mostly mystery or just Um, general fiction? Lots of romance, rom-coms, mystery, cozies, historical fiction. And they've just started doing biblical fiction. Mm -hmm. So um, I love them. Like I said, very family oriented. That's great. And so there, I guess they're going to do your next, your sequel. Right. So I signed a contract for all three books. Oh, sweet. Off of the first one. Yeah. Yeah. I had the titles of the other two, uh-huh. but I have not written. Well, I'm a little over halfway into the second one. Well, tell me about that process. It's always interesting to me, especially as I sort of walked through my own little kids' book over there. It's, it was written for like fifth graders, basically, because mm-hmm. my daughter was in that grade at the time. Right. Anyway, these, especially um, some of the, like we were talking about Frieda McFadden, some of the, even the Perry Mason novels that have the twist, mm-hmm. you know, they drop key clues along the way. Yes. So you hope you're you're trying to see you know figure it out right. it's always interesting to me how authors can i don't it's always wonder do you start at the end with like what it is and then maybe work backwards or what's your process to keep it all organized and my process is very unorganized I, so there are people that are called plotters mm-hmm. that's what you're talking about and then there's people called pantsers and then there's kind of a hybrid the planter mm-hmm. and i'm sort of a planter but more of a pantser so i just sit down and i write and things happen like um i don't know if i want to reveal that but in the in the second book i'm working on and all of a sudden my main character ended up in this situation and i was like wait a minute i didn't know that was coming (laughs) and i had to sit on it for a couple days and i thought okay now i know why she's here so now i got to get her out of there Mm. (laughs) you know um i i sort of plot backwards so i have um a beat sheet. I don't know if you know what that is, Mm-mm. but basically in any story, and I'm sure you've seen it in the Perry Mason books, there's certain things that happen at certain times. Mm-hmm. And that's what keeps us reading. Sure. Right? If they don't hook us right away, I mean, I'm I'm pretty, any anymore, I'm like, you get me in the first couple of pages or else I'm yeah pretty much done with you. Mm-hmm. Um, so they have to hook you right away and then they have to kind of give you some insight into what's going on and have to keep going. It doesn't have to be super fast paced like an action movie, mm-hmm. but it needs to keep going at a certain pace. Mm-hmm. So that's what beat sheets are. They show you how to hit those beats mm-hmm. in a story. And so I write and then I go back and see if I'm in that general ballpark area yeah. of what I need to be doing, what I need to be hitting, you know, your plot points and that kind of thing. So that's how I do it. I kind of go backwards. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And that makes sense on the, cause I've thought about that too. The books that draw you in right. do feed you the little bit. And I, yeah. I circle back to the Frieda McFadden novels because I've read quite a few of them now and she's real good at, she you know, is. you know, on all of them, all she has a definitely a method and they're mm-hmm. all going to have some twist. But like in, in The Teacher, I did not see that one specific twist right. at the end. I uh, thought that was interesting. I thought it was better than Coworker, but I did as, as a, I, I, str- I struggled a little with the subject matter on it. Yes. Spe- yes. Speaking of that, yes. let me tell you a little sidebar on books here with this bookstore. So, again, I was reading all these different books, and then some books are very hot. You know, the new we have new and used books. Mm-hmm. So we get from Ingram the new, new hotness books. That, that, you know, people will come in to get that and then hopefully find other things. But anyway... Um, the book that had been flying off the shelf the last couple of months was Fourth Wing. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you read that. Oh, or, yeah. Okay. So I read it. Mm-hmm. But before I read it, I had a church lady come in, 
and was looking for uh, something for her, you know, herself. And she was looking for another book for a friend to kind of motivate. Apparently, he was an underperformer where she worked, and she was going to buy him a book to maybe motivate him. Okay. So I recommended Can't Hurt Me, David Goggins' mm-hmm. book, but it's got a lot of language in it. Mm-hmm. And when I told her that, she did not want that. She didn't right. want language. She didn't want anything like that. Right. And uh, she she did reference church a lot. And I'm very pro-church. I'm a Christian. It's all good. It's just that I'm open to reading a lot of things. Right. I'm very open-minded on things. And I got the vibe she was not. Right. So not having read fourth wing oh no <laughs> i recommended she was i was like well look all the women that come in are buying this fourth wing oh, i was like man. it must be good everybody's i said i haven't read it but, but it is good <laughs> yeah yeah oh it was good and so she gets it well then i read it oh, i read no. fourth wing and i was like oh all i could think about was this church lady i was like oh no she's never coming back she's going to be embarrassed because it, so I, anyway i said that to mm-hmm. say this i in, as a man mm-hmm. a lot of these books i've enjoyed I don't enjoy the the romance and the sex and things right. like that. I just don't. Like mm-hmm. as a, and you would think as a guy I would. It's interesting though that women and I don't want to uh, you know vaguely categorize all women, but these tend to draw women. Mm-hmm. They seem to to like that part of it. You know, a lot of them I think read it for that part. And I think men don't know that that's even in there. They're like, oh, "Oh, she's reading some romance book and it's got descriptive yeah, stuff in I, it. that caught me off guard i did not know that was in there and i have warned a few people that i know would mm. not appreciate that at all well and i'm fine with it i mean i, I obviously in that genre i guess it's sometimes expected maybe well, it works for her sure sure I, I couldn't write it it would make me very uncomfortable i was uncomfortable reading it yes you know like yes. i tried to figure out where it, and, and not even again i'm a grown man you but, could have but but not to really beat the you know the uh-huh. dead horses, she could have written it without that. Yeah, I, yeah. I have an I imagination. I'm a grown woman. Mm-hmm. I don't need that. I agree. It would have been the story's awesome, and she's the great. Story at, is she's great, great at writing. There's yes. different, like you said, there's different points that it, it would hook you along yes. as it went. I Kept read the second going. book. Yes. I've already read the second I'm working one. Working on that one. Iron Flame. It's mm-hmm. long, but it's good. Yes, it's even got a, a twist at the end. Um, but yeah. I just as a guy, I would. I guess I say this because it's not that I care. Right? It's fine. Read whatever. I was just shocked because I, just, mm-hmm. as a man, didn't know. Mm-hmm. It, it's mm-hmm. literally like a secret, I think. That, uh, yeah, that a lot it of is the, a well kept secret. The lady, well, not anymore. <laughs> so, but they're not great. Anymore. Those are all great books. Like you know, the Perfect Marriage, uh, all those Freddie McFadden oh, yeah. novels. Uh, the and I'm not Hoover. into banned books. I don't. I don't. No, no, I no. Yeah. In, you know, read what you want to read. I don't really care what you read. Yeah. Um, but and, and like I said, I'm a grown up. I can handle whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but there, I had never read fantasy uh-huh. until I read that book. But I'm in a critique group of writers that I am the only person that doesn't write fantasy or sci-fi. Mm-hmm. So I'm like this, you know, outsider over here, and I'm reading their stuff and critiquing it. I'm like, you know, I really like this. Mm-hmm. So I pick up Fourth Wing, and I loved the fantasy part. That was great. And then I read, one of my friends in the critique group wrote a book called Shield of the King. Mm-hmm. And it's clean, but it's very fan. You know, it has fantasy. The whole book is fantasy, but it's a great story. And so I can compare those two, and both of them compelled me to keep reading mm-hmm. and want to read his next book. He hasn't finished writing it, but um, I I never thought I'd like fantasy. Mm-hmm. It just never struck me as a genre that was. I kind of look down on it, to be very honest with you. Yeah, well, I was the same way. It's a bit with, of a snob. I, I was the same way with yeah. the, I hate to keep saying the feminine books, but like the romance suspense novel type mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I read the, I read those three, there was the three back-to-back, The Perfect Marriage, The Housemaid, and mm-hmm. Verity. Mm-hmm. And they all pop, pop, pop. Great yeah. story, great yeah. twists. Mm-hmm. And I was just sucked in by them. Mm-hmm. And so then I have subsequently now what i do now is i read something that i traditionally would read uh, you know something dry a right. biography or whatever mm-hmm. that i enjoy history mm-hmm. um and then i'll read uh like maybe a fantasy book or something like that self-help and then i'll read one of those one i rotate the them through yeah. yeah read all the sure. time and um, i've read a couple biographies recently that i hadn't read anything like that in years you know I, you get stuck mm-hmm. in a genre and i read matthew perry's uh, I saw that. I thought about like, getting that. Was it pretty good? Excellent. Was it? Excellent. I read Britney Spears' oh, really? biography that came out. Yeah, I haven't read that. And all she talks about is Justin Timberlake. Like the oh, whole wow. book is her yeah. just talking, and and, mm-hmm. and not even necessarily in a negative way. Just 
Mm-hmm. And she clearly was in love with Justin Timberlake. Apparently. Apparently. <laughs> but yeah, that one was interesting. I also uh, read Spare by... Um, oh yeah, I saw Terry. that. I, I didn't necessarily have an interest in reading that yeah. one, but it's do, it's tracking, trending well. It, it seems to have good... It is uh, fascinating. Mm-hmm. It's... I would be interested in in reading one by his brother mm-hmm. and kind of trying to figure out where the truth lies in there. Anybody's autobiography is, you know, our perception sure. of who we are is sure. a lot more than who we really are. Does that make sure. sense? So uh, I think um, he had some very valid concerns and issues to be told as a child, you're the spare, mm-hmm. to be taught as to be um, treated as the spare would be it, that's unimaginable to me i have five kids i can't imagine telling you know the first one oh you're the best and the rest of them yeah well you know something happens to that one yeah you know that you're next in line <laughs> so definitely just, a different culture i don't understand yes the way very different very are. different culture yes but yeah. that was interesting too and i've never been big into the royal family or anything but i just thought it was very interesting now, on your book, obviously, people can pick it up at the, the, our bookstore. Hopefully, Yay. we can get enough copies <laughs> yes. to, to sell them there for you. Um, but are, are, where else is it available? If they Amazon, to... obviously. Uh-huh. And it, anything's on Amazon. Um, I believe you can get it at Barnes & Noble online. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's in the store. I'm sure it just hit or miss. Depends on if they picked it up or not. Right. Yeah, we're you know we're a small bookstore, as mm-hmm. you saw if you went in. It's we we're trying to be. Um, new and used but it's interesting as as we work because we've been open four months and as we learn what people want Mm -hmm. the new books typically draw more people in but sometimes they'll come in to look at a new book and then maybe walk through and find something else because a lot of the other books i have are new they're just out of print i have mostly new and then we have some used books Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's just interesting and then you have some people come in just for records like they don't care about anything else they just want the records Yeah. yeah That's what they're looking at, and um, do you are they new or used? No, they're all used. So I have they're a I have I say that there's maybe three or four that I bought from Ingram that mm-hmm. are new, but and this is not again a knock on Ingram, but as a as a business I can't I lose money yes. if I sell a new record. I agree. Uh, there's yes. just not enough profit margin after shipping and everything for me to make any money right. on it. Right. And uh, that's the only other complaint on Ingram is you make one order. But Ingram has the different distribution houses, mm-hmm. and depending on where you're, you might get uh, charged shipping for one right. book, and the shipping is more than the cost of yes. the book yes. for the one book. So uh, that's a frustration that I, I have with them. But, you know, it just is what it is. They're basically the monopoly. There's, they are. There's, it, so it's get, Amazon when you ask where can you get the book. Well, yeah. obviously Amazon because you can get everything on Amazon. Yeah. You know? Well, right now, though, they can't get a signed book by you on Amazon. That's true. They could get that at I our bookstore. I will sign the book. <laughs> I, will sign, I will even personalize it if you want me to. So <laughs> how is the book doing for you? Is it doing it's as you hoped? It's fun. It's, uh-huh. it's, it's fun. I, my goal was always have a traditionally published book. Mm-hmm. I never set goals beyond that. I never dreamed that that dream would come true. Yeah. You know, and, um, but gosh, when did it come? It came out in February. So I'm almost 62. And, you know. Well, you don't look 62. That was a dream I've had since, yeah. you know, a kid. And, and now, you know, it, it's just, it's still so surreal to me. So I have sold books at my book signing and then books to kind of random people that wanted them um my book club is doing the i'm in tipton county chapter chicks which is all female sorry but my book club is doing birds alive on sunday as the book where do you guys meet at the in munford at the gazebo you know where that is y'all are welcome to use our bookstore if if you ever want to we've got a book uh the shelby county i'm gonna butcher what they're called something north ladies book club something they're using okay. us in may they're going to start using us every month Ooh, to meet. we have that fun. front area that's a sitting mm-hmm. area and we want people to utilize it okay we don't charge anything nothing like that okay we just want you to use it right so and, it, and if it ends up you need it in uh, hours where we normally would close we'll just stay open okay for when you're gonna I'll, be there. I'll let them know because sometimes mm-hmm. we can't meet there but yeah it's i think it was the old band room i think originally I, when we lived here before we're military so we lived here active duty and then came back retired I think it was the old library. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, we're doing this this weekend, so I'm really excited about that. I can sign their books, but we get to talk about it. And, and what I love is kind of what we're doing, just ask me questions, sure. you know, either about the process or what what I loved about the book, why I came up with it, whatever. You know, I, I don't care. Ask me. 
Doesn't yeah, well, and I appreciate you being open. I'm interested in it because I would love to have a traditionally published book also. Right. Now, I don't know. Another question I had for you was on editing. Because mm-hmm. when I did my own book, I, I, I bought a, this is this was years ago. I was still a cop at the time and super broke. And uh, that's in the book. <laughs> Literally, the book is from my life where we were right. struggling with our mortgage right. and everything. Yeah. And then it's about a. Uh, my, I, my my daughter was into art. I've got three boys and one girl. Okay. So there's a special relationship mm-hmm. with my daughter. Right. And so we would read every night. And in the process of doing that, I had the idea of, she was she had a vivid imagination, as a, still does as an adult. Mm-hmm. But anyway, we would talk and we started coming up with this story and she liked to paint. So in the, in the book, basically it's at the house we're in now. And I find, a, I can't afford a paintbrush for her, but mm-hmm. I find one under the house. And then it ends okay. up being a magic paintbrush. Anyway. Oh, neat. Anyway, but what I was going to get at is, I am not the great. I, my undergrad is in criminal justice, right. and then I have a doctorate in law, of course, mm-hmm. but that doesn't mean I know how to use grammar. Exactly. <laughs> so I know even as published, as, a, as you can buy it on Amazon, but as self-published, I know it's got errors in it because right. I never had anybody go over it. How was that process for you, the editing process? Um, I I think I do know grammar fairly well. <laughs> good, good. Yeah, so I, you try. It's you don't want to send like your first rough draft to mm-hmm. a publisher and say, Hey, you want to publish this? That's not going to make a good impression. And, um, as you can tell, I, I say things like gonna, but I can't write that way unless that's how they're speaking. Yeah. So, um, I did a lot of self editing mm-hmm. and then when they bought it or gave me the contract for it, it was, it went through developmental editing, which is when they, I don't know if you know all this, but they look through no, the I whole don't know book. They look through the whole book and they say, okay, you have a gap here. This doesn't make sense here. One of the things that I really have, I struggle with is, um, so for instance, if you grew a mustache and I see you in three weeks and you have them, I would not even notice. My husband has shaved his whole beard and mustache off. (laughs) And like three or four days later, I'm like, did you shave? And he's (laughs) like, yeah. The only time I really noticed was when he shaved his head. I noticed that one right away. So sensory details <laughs> explaining, you know, the wind fluttered through her hair or whatever, something like that. I'm not good at that. Hmm. That is something I'm not good at explaining or describing in a, in a readable fashion, mm-hmm. you know, the setting. Um, it's just not my my strong point Mm -hmm. i know how to get places but if i if you want me to tell you how to get there i'm going to tell you what you take a right at that stop line yeah i understand left at that stop sign um so uh, yeah that's that's something that the developmental editor kind of helped me with Mm -hmm. and also every chapter you want to hook your reader every end of chapter you want to keep them guessing you want to leave with a cliffhanger so She helped me with that, and then it went to what was supposed to go to a line editor, and I waited and waited and waited, and then I got an email from my publisher, and she said, did you ever get your line edits? And I said, no. She said, I didn't think so. (laughs) So instead of the line edits coming to me and me going over them and accepting them, because you do have some leeway Mm -hmm. to, quote, argue with them as long as it's not violating their standards of how they do things Mm -hmm. you do have a little leeway so anyhow my line edits kind of got a little messed up but we worked it out she sent me the whole thing and then um i said yes ma'am and most of it and a couple things i said you know i really want to keep this this way and she worked with me um she's matter of fact i designed the cover and i sent it to her i said this is what i want it to look like and she bought the license to the background picture Mm -hmm. and then made it look just like i designed it nice so she's awesome it does sound like they were very yes very accommodating yes yes so um it is it is a process i didn't have i'm just i'm pretty good with i used to proofread Mm -hmm. um i used to proofread way back in the day for thomas nelson bibles okay this was before i was married so almost four years ago yeah long time ago Hmm. Yeah, I'm just, you know, lawyers, legalese is definitely not normal language. Right. And so the way we write, sometimes we don't even write in complete sentences, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I've done that. And then I, before that, I was a cop. And again, a cop report is not the same. Right. So it was different. I had never had to use dialogue. And that was all different to me. Probably not a lot of punctuation either. No, probably not. Yeah. When, or, or even capitalization. Right. <laughs> when my husband, um, we were in the, he was in the Navy back in the day, long before the cell phone thing okay so we did letters Mm -hmm. because if we did a phone call it'd be like four hundred dollars and that was 
once we were really broke. So um, his letters were sort of one sentence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was no punctuation. <laughs> I understand. It was a big run on sentence. Yeah, big run on sentence. And I would just sort of sit down and I'd be so excited. And then I'd be like, I have no idea what you're saying. <laughs> they just code. Yes. My, uh, my oldest son, Alex, is in the Navy. Okay. He's on the Carl Vincent right now in San Diego. Okay. That's where he's he's a gunner's mate now. Okay. What uh, kind of ship is that? It's an aircraft carrier. Oh, wow. Yeah. He went yeah. in on a SEAL contract. And oh, And he wow. got injured in BUDS. Mm-hmm. Uh, our whole family, like, I owned martial arts schools, and the kids were always super active. So he was a borderline super athlete coming up. But, man, that, that stuff they put them through is something else. Ooh, yeah. And so he gets yeah. rolled out of that. And they put him in the fleet, and so now he's a gunner's mate on the Carl Vincent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He still. I talked to him last night actually for a long time. He's still doing doing great. That's good. So, but uh, and then my his mother's family came here because of Millington, because right. of the naval base. They right. they were transit from that. I remember when my husband said, "I want to go to Millington." I'm like, "Honey, his his geography is bad." Yeah, yeah. So I'm like. Babe, there's no ocean. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing there. How is that the big Navy even, base? Why do you want to? Hey, go that there? you know this. They all know it though. Like when I've been visited yeah. several times in San yeah. Diego, and it, these I say kids, uh, the sailors there. Sure. They all know Millington, you know, oh, because yeah. that's where those orders Beepers, come from. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, my dad it's so funny. was like, wow, because when my dad was young, he, um, it was still a naval air station. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, when I was a kid, that's what it was, right. and uh, it was a lot of it was. I don't want to say harder sailors, but I guess more enlisted. Right. Now you go and it's all now this rank all, there. Yes. I remember they had yes. uh, the what was the name of that place? It was something anchor. This bar. Mm-hmm. My, my dad, when I was a kid, Josh and I are brothers, and when our when I was little, our father had a, a video game uh, amusement company where he would go okay. put game machines and right. boxes in places and then mm-hmm. check them, service them. And there was a, oh, what was the name of that bar? It, I remember it had an anchor on it. It was at the Officers Club, I'm sure. Maybe. I don't know. This was Sailor. Well, it, it these were like enlisted, enlisted guys. Yeah. yeah, these were enlisted guys because yeah. it was rough. Right. And, uh, <laughs> because, you know, they're young guys and you know what I mean. Yeah. But I remember even being, as a kid going in there and knowing that it was a rough place. You know, right. my dad's bringing me in there yeah. to change the machine. Yeah. But anyway, now it's a completely different. You go down there to McAllister's and you got like admirals and stuff. You know, I know. You, so I know. it's interesting. And we were enlisted. Um, but it is a different life. Mm-hmm. And the further up you go, the closer you get to it. My my dad and his, um, both my grandfathers were officers in the Navy. So I was a little bit used to that. Mm-hmm. I've been trained. You, you, were, you didn't know you were getting ready for the, the, the life of it. Oh, no, I would never. We lived outside of Pensacola, and I, I absolutely would not date anybody in the Navy, hmm. ever. And then I met my husband in Nashville. It's random. Very random. And he was in the delayed entry program. He's a couple years younger than me. So he was going straight into the Navy after high school. And then we fell in love, and I was like, oh, boy. <laughs> How long have you been married? I guess I signed up for this. 38 years. Just oh. had 38 years. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Thanks. Nowadays, that's a huge deal. I mean, yeah. people make it five years, and they think they've you know won the lottery oh, nowadays. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, it's not always easy, but it's very good. So to start tying us up here, I have one more question for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you were to give a new author, and I preface this by saying that I'm not the type that thinks that everybody can be published. You've obviously got skill, or this wouldn't have uh, you wouldn't have had this uh, success. But, you know, if they have a, a monochrome of, of, of skill on it mm-hmm. and are wanting to pursue becoming an author, what's mm-hmm. something, one thing you would tell them to, to do or to focus on uh, to try to achieve that goal? Learning the craft. Because I, anymore, traditional publishing and self-publishing are pretty equal. Mm-hmm. And if you read a self-published book that is not done well, you know it. If yeah. you read a traditional published book, and there are some that are not done well, you know it. Yeah. So learn the craft. Mm-hmm. Learn what works for you. I always would ask authors, how do you do it? Because I wanted like whatever this little spark was that I didn't have. And they were like, put your butt in the chair. I'm like, that really doesn't help me. Yeah. So go to writing conferences. There are a lot of online free resources. A lot. Mm-hmm. Um, talk to people. 
talk to me. I, you know. <laughs> yeah, come to the Jam Books and Records Grand Jam's Opening. Book. Yes, <laughs> yes, come to the Grand Opening. Ask me questions. Um, so much is online now that wasn't back in the day, and I think that's what frustrated me back then. And probably you, when you mm-hmm. were younger and you were writing, is you didn't know where to. Where no, to I would from. buy the Writer's Market book. Sure. And then look in there for the publishers, and then they would all have yes. different requirements on how you submit to them. Yes. And I say I submitted, I think I sent it to three publishers. Sure. Because then you also had to learn some don't do kids' books. Yes. You know, you've got to mm-hmm. find specifically what they're oh, you interested do. in. Oh, gosh. That would be the second one is follow guidelines. Mm-hmm. All guidelines yeah, are yeah. set there for a reason. Yeah, and I think it's like anything else, and it's almost like a job interview. It's a te- the, the, the submission yes. is a test to see if you Very are going to be a good so. employee, if good author. If you're going to query form. somebody and mm-hmm. you don't follow their guidelines, they will not even look at you. Yeah, I've had success. I've had some art magazine articles published in legal Great. productions, yes. which was awesome. I was just glad to get anything mm-hmm. published, honestly. Um, but, like, nobody wants to read my fiction, so, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> so we'll see. Well, well, Miss Jennifer, thank you. Congratulations thank on the book. You. You know, I'm excited to read it, it myself, and I'm glad that you know we can carry it in the store. And yeah. I'm excited that you're coming to our grand opening. I'm excited too. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So, where if they're looking for more information on you, where can mm-hmm. they go to find that? I have a blog, of course, like everybody does. Um, JenDodrellWrites.com, and um, and I do blog on there about writing the writing craft so mm-hmm. that would be a good place to start if you're Great. curious about well maybe that. we need to get you set up to do uh just a little informal class for us at the bookstore for people oh, that yeah. are interested i, I think that'd that. be awesome mm-hmm. i'd enjoy it mm-hmm. you just set it up sometime that's sure. convenient and you can go over it with people okay and i apologize in advance on the bookstore grand opening i've got like five huge things that are going to be there i'm sure people will be there for you mm-hmm. but it's it, I anticipate it's going to be like a circus. So yeah. we'll, we'll see how it ends up. I'm good with a circus. I Like I said, I raised five kids, and my husband was at sea for, uh, or attached to a ship for 14 years. So circus was kind of our main. <laughs> it was the daily along norm. With chaos, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I thank you guys for watching. And I'll start with the jam, books and records. So again, this weekend, April 20th, uh, from 1 to 3 p.m. at Jam Books and Records on the Square. You can see Miss Jennifer there. Uh, we've got a couple other authors. N.A. The Band is going to be performing, and I have a bottle of Pappy Van Winkle. All the vinyl will be on sale for 40% off. Everything else in the store will be 20% off. So please come check us out. Now, that'll be all day Saturday. We open at noon, close at 9 Saturday. The grand opening is from 1 to 3. And then one other thing I want to mention that I'm hoping you guys will support us on. We had a student in my martial arts school whose house burned down two weeks ago. It was struck by lightning, completely destroyed. They lost everything. So what we're doing is at 3 p.m. at the, the grand opening, we're going to have a board break uh, fundraiser where the students and myself will break a bunch of boards to try to raise some money uh, for this uh, this family. And we're also taking donations of clothes, uh, food, whatever, just any item. They don't have anything. They lost everything, com- complete loss. Uh, at any of my businesses. So you can go to the Millington Martial Arts School, the Covington Martial Arts School, the bookstore, the law firm, uh, any of the businesses will accept donations for this family. And, uh, you know, if you want to, you can come at 3 um, Saturday or hang out after the, the grand opening. And once we do the fundraiser, we're just taking literally like monetary donations that people, and all the money, everything that comes in all goes to this family. Uh, to try to help them out. You know, I think a lot of times uh, we are blessed and take it for granted, all of us. We, we're all blessed in certain ways. And I think we often fo- focus in life on problems that we have and aren't thankful for the blessings that are in front of us. And, uh, you know, right now, if you've got a bed to sleep in, you know, you're more blessed than this family. So, so the least we can do as a community is come together and try to help people when they when they need it. So anyway, hopefully you guys will come check us out. So, uh, and of course, Michelle Allen is a good one to have there because I'm sure she'll be very supportive of, mm-hmm. of anything we do. <laughs> Make sure you check her out if you're trying to buy, sell, rent, uh, lease real estate. And then just throw yours up, Josh. And then, uh, of course, if you need any help with social media and stuff, just check out Josh's uh, Masonite Digital Marketing. He'll get you set up with uh, social media promotions, commercials, videos, et cetera. And uh, so, again, I want to thank Miss Jennifer Dodrell yes. uh, for being here, local author. You can see her again at the bookstore this weekend. And I thank you guys for watching us, too. I hope you have a good rest of your week. Keep kicking. Thanks for watching, guys. Just remember that this is not legal advice or investment advice or business advice. This is for fun and entertainment purposes only.